Hey everyone, so I made this camera and it's an ESP32 cam that connects to a large language model and describes the scene. So I'm just going to take a photo of these cars here and see if it describes the scene. Alright, so now I have to hold the mic close to the speaker because it's not very loud. The image shows a collection of toy cars arranged on a table, possibly for display or play. There are various types and colors of toy cars, including different brands like Hot Wheels, which are known for their realistic designs and attention to detail. These toys can be used for imaginative play or as collectibles by enthusiasts who appreciate the craftsmanship and design in miniature models. Okay, so um, the large language model is running on my local computer with Olama. So the, the photo gets sent to my computer, streamed over my local network, and then it, it, it does a text-to-speech and it returns back to the camera. So I'm going to show you how I made this in the rest of the video. I'm using the Lava model, which is pretty good for image analysis. And I'll, I'll just go through all the parts I used and all the wiring and all the code. And I've marked all the chapters as well, so you can just skip to the chapters you're interested in. Okay, I'll see you in the next scene. Thank you. Hey everyone. So today I'm going to build an ESP32 camera that connects to a large language model and describes the scene. So the first thing I'm going to need, of course, is an ESP32 camera. And I'm going to use the AI Thinker. It's just the one I'm used to working with. And then I'm going to need a Max 98357 amplifier to drive the speakers. So I'll connect this to this and then that'll connect to the speakers. And of course, I'm going to need a speaker. This is an 8 ohm speaker that I got off like AliExpress or one of those websites. And I'm going to use an OLED to, to display, I guess, uh, like error messages and also the IP address of the ESP32. A push button to tell it when to capture the image. On off switch, just to, I guess, turn it on and off and a battery shield. This is for an 18650 battery and I'm just going to use this battery here. And I'm going to use this battery shield. It's pretty good because it outputs a 5 volt. Uh, it, it has like a 5 volt regulator on it. Okay, so now I guess the first thing to do is to put all this together on a, a breadboard, okay? So... Here's one I prepared earlier. Now, I flushed some code onto this and I've got it working. So when I take a picture, it kind of comes back with a description of the scene. And so I'll show you the code and then I'll show you it working. Uh, but also I'm gonna put all this onto a PCB as well and then put it all in a box that I printed up. So this is the box here that I printed up. So I can put everything in that box. And then um, that's going to be a lot easier to hold because this is a bit finicky, like the wires can come out and you get a little bit of noise on the speakers and stuff as well. So I'll show you the code and then I'll show you the wiring and I'll show you, I'll give you a demo of it working. Okay, actually, maybe I'll do a quick demo first and then I'll show you the code and the wiring. Hey everyone, so I'm just going to give you a quick demo. And I've mounted everything on a piece of perf board just to make it easier to hold. So I'll start up the Python code and then I'll take a selfie. All right, so the quality is not very good, but I'll click a selfie and I'll see what it says. All right, so now I've got to hold the microphone close to the speaker because it's quite soft. In the image, you see a person who appears to be a middle-aged man with short grey hair. He is making a facial expression that could be interpreted as a smile or a grimace. Depending on how one looks at it, 
The background suggests an indoor setting. So I'm just going to go over the code with you quickly. So there's two pieces of code. There's the SP32 code, which is written in C, C++, and I'm using the Arduino IDE for that. And then there's the Python code, which is doing the inference and using the Alama library to run the LLM locally. And that basically describes the image and then does a, a text-to-speech and puts the speech into an audio file. So what happens when we press this button, this blue button, is the ESP32 sends a message to the Python code that says, all right, I'm ready for inference. The Python code does the inference, and then it sends a message back to the ESP32 that says this is done, and then the ESP32 streams the audio file. So basically what we do, we set this up, we initialize the Wi-Fi, initialize the camera, start the camera server, which starts serving the images. And so, and then in the loop, uh, it doesn't really do much until the button is pressed. So once the button is pressed, um, it does a semaphore. So the semaphore here basically just pauses the, the video output. So this just pauses the HTTP server that's serving the, the images. And then it deinitializes the camera and we have to deinitialize the camera otherwise because the camera and the audio will clash uh, well this is with the audio library i'm using and i chose this audio library because i could stream images over a network i mean i could stream audio files over a network with it um, but they'll clash they can't be they can't be on at the same time so i deinitialize the the camera and then i i I send a message to the, this request inference, sends a message to the Python code saying, all right, do the inference. And then I'm waiting for a response. And then once this waiting for a response goes, uh, goes low, I'm not waiting anymore. I, um, I, it means it's received and I can play the audio. So this audio will request the audio file. Uh, so what happens in this file is it, uh, is it, now this is important, it, it, it creates this audio object locally. So this is just in scope, this audio object, because when this object is, in, is created, it, uh, it, it, it basically it creates some memory and that memory will, cr will clash with the camera, which is why we had to deinitialize the camera. So once this function's finished, it basically it requests the file here, it requests the audio file so this requests the audio file from the from the host. So I'm just calling it output.mp3. And then it plays the audio file. And once it's finished, it exits. But once it's finished, this audio object will go out of scope, which means we'll get our memory back. And then we can reinitialize the camera. And if that fails, I just restart the ESP32. But it usually doesn't. Uh, so that's pretty much it. And then with this uh, Python code, uh, we use the Solama library basically, um, and now this byte array is important because this puts the image into an array which is of the form that we can pass to the LLM. And I'm using Lava, which is uh, a good model. This model Lava that I'm using uh, down here. This model, this model Lava, is uh, is very good for images. It does image analysis. But to input the image, uh, when I'm using it at the prompt, I can use the file name. But when I'm using it in the in the Python code, I can't use the file name because it can't access it. So what I have to do is I have to put it in a byte array, which is kind of like, it looks like this form. So I put the JPEG image in a byte array uh, with this function up here. And then this byte array is, is basically how I can pass it to the model. And then this class here, this request handle, that just handles the request for the audio file from the ESP32. So that just passes this output.mp3 file uh, back to the ESP32 and just streams it. I'm just waiting to receive the PCBs from PCBWay and then I'll put all that together and I'll show you that working. My PCBs arrived from PCBWay this morning so I can get rid of all the spaghetti on the breadboard and just put it onto this PCB. So this PCB, it's more like a, I guess like a shield. So I just have to plug in my components. So all I have to do is I have to solder on 
some female header pins on these ones and then this is going to be a push button and these three are resistors and then this is the terminal screw for the uh, power input and here I'm going to have a rocker a rocker switch so um, here's one I prepared earlier and I put that into its case so the case I printed has like a handle where the battery goes the 18, 18650 battery so I can kind of just hold it up uh, but so I flashed on this sketch which is a internet radio sketch and I mean this is quite important because it's a simple sketch so it's important that you try to get this working this internet radio sketch or some simple sketch working uh, just so you can troubleshoot the I2S and the speakers without having to worry about without having to worry about the camera so I'll turn that on and just make sure it's working All right, so that's working. Uh, I'll just switch that off now. And I guess the last thing I'm gonna uh, talk about is these speakers here. So this speaker here is actually about five times. These were about, I got two of these for $30. And this is a four ohm speaker. And this is an eight ohm speaker that I got off um, AliExpress. So these are the more expensive speakers and these actually sound a lot better uh, than, the, than the smaller speaker. So there was a big difference. So I'll try to link both of those in the description and you can choose, but it is really worthwhile uh, getting uh, better speakers. And uh, yeah, um, so next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna flash my code onto here for, uh, for connecting to the LLM and then sending a, an audio file that describes the scene and hopefully we'll get all that working in the next scene. So I've got the FTDI adapter now connected to the SP32 cam and I've broken out some pins on the PCB especially to do that. So I've got the zero pin grounded with this little blue wire here. So when I turn it on, it should, it should uh, come onto the serial monitor ready to flash. So let's try that. All right, so what's happening here, you can see there, there's like an error there, and that's because I've got this uh, this OLED plugged in, because one of the pins on the OLED is high. So one of the pin, the SDA pin is connected to pin 14, and this is hold, held high when it's not activated. So if pin 14 is high, when I try to put it into flash mode, it fails for some reason. So now you can see it says waiting for download. So it's it's in flashing mode now, so I can flash it. So what I have to do, I have to flash it, and then I have to put the this this OLED screen back in once I've flashed it. All right. I'm just going to go over the wiring. This is a fritzing that I've set up for the project. And in the center, we've got the ESP32 cam. Over here on this strip, I've got the Max 98357 amplifier. And all the pin numbers are here in the corner, so you can see all the pin numbers there. And most of them are also listed in the code. So um, this here is the OLED. And then the push button is here, and that's connected to pin 4, which also is the, uh, is the flash on the camera. So uh, yeah, I just didn't have another pin that I could connect that to. And then I've got some resistors here. So this is just a 220 ohm resistor, which... Uh, connects the push button to pin four and that's just for protection on the input pins. I probably don't actually need that. And then a 10K resistor, which is a pull down resistor uh, so that the pin stays uh, connected to ground. And then I've got a 1K resistor here, or you can just, you probably don't even need a resistor there, but I just thought it might be good if I needed a voltage divider in case I needed uh, 3.3 volts and I'm running off a five volt input, but the ESP32 cab can deal with the 5 volt input. And here is the terminal strip. This is for the power input. And then this is a rocker switch, which switches it on and off. Okay, and over here I've broken out the, the UART pins so I can uh, just plug the FTDI adapter straight in. And here I can connect uh, pin zero to ground uh, just to put it into flashing mode. Um, and now this here is pin 16 and uh, when I tried to use pin 16, if I use this as either an input or an output, 
the ESP32 crashed, so I couldn't actually get that pin working. Uh, so if you know anything about that, uh, please leave it in the comments. And then here's just a couple of holes for mounting. These are M3 holes for mounting on, a, on the standoffs. Uh, so I'll put this up on my GitHub. And if you've got any questions about the wiring, please leave them in the comments. So I've got this camera ready now, and I'm going to take a photograph of that wall behind the camera, that bookshelf, and see what kind of description I get. So I'm going to turn this around. Okay, now I have to hold the mic close to the speaker. This is an image of a room that appears to be a home library or office. The room has shelves filled with books, and there's a desk with what looks like computer equipment on it. There are also some objects on the desk that could be used for electronic work or hobbies. The overall impression is that of a well-used and personal space dedicated to reading, studying, or working. All right, so that's pretty good. So that's pretty good for a LLM running locally. Um, so I'm quite happy with that. So the next step, I guess, is to try to um, implement, try to integrate the LLM into more advanced robotics. Uh, so I'm going to think a bit about how I'm going to do that, uh, probably like with a robot car or something. Uh, but th uh, thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.